Good day, everyone. Welcome to Vanish Chicago Land Stories, the podcast, episode 37, season two. I'm your host, Pete Costanas, and I hope that you're going to enjoy today's uh, episode. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, he, this program is brought to you by Schlitz Beer. And here is a commercial from the 1960s. Enjoy. There is just one Schlitz, yeah, yeah, nothing else comes near. When you're out of Schlitz, you're out of beer. We are back. I'm, I hope you enjoyed that commercial of Schlitz beer. Uh, that's uh, that's one uh, subject I will talk about uh, during this episode. And the other subject today will be about Richard Donner, the, dire- the famous director. He passed away yesterday on July 5th, 2021. Uh, I will talk about, uh, about his career and uh, a couple of memories about him of his movies. So uh, first off, we'll talk about Schlitz beer. Uh, That beer was uh, very uh, memorable in the old days. Uh, The other one was Meisterbrow and Drury's. Drury's. Uh, I'll talk about those two beers on later episodes in more detail. So that should be fun as well. Uh, for Schlitz beer, I'm going to start in the beginning how it was found, how the company was founded, and uh, it was called the Joseph Schlitz Schlitz Brewery Company. I can't even say his name. Ooh, terrible. And uh, that was founded in 1849 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, a long time ago. And uh, Originally, it was not owned by Joseph Slitz. It was owned by a man named August Krug. And then, but the ownership uh, was passed to Joseph Slitz when he married uh, August Krug's widow. And that was in 1858. And he, uh, he also brought, uh, Schlitz also bought the Stroh's Brewery Company, Stroh's Beer. Uh, they don't make that anymore. So I remember that one as well. And now it's owned by Paps Brewing Company. So I'll go in a little more detail uh, as I go along. So um, let's start in the beginning a little bit. Uh, he was a, uh, Schlitz was a bookkeeper in a uh, in a tavern brewery owned by August Krug. And then uh, so uh, his uh, Krug's nephew, his name is August Uline. Ul- he began employment employment at the brewery, so that's how they started the the company. And uh, let's see what else. Uh, so it started to take uh, the popularity started to take off. Uh, you know that brand was uh, very uh, well known at the time. Uh, there was advertisements, and then uh, there were newspaper ads, and then on radio, and then television. And uh, when my parents got married. And my mother came to America in 1962. She that was the first beer she saw, American beer. That is, is Schlitz. She remembered that. Uh, she also remembered Miller and Pabst, and there was another one, uh, Blatt's beer, and uh, she remembered those. And of course, Meisterbrow. So, uh, so it was very, um, very presentable. Very prominent in the Chicago land area, and then uh, you could—they had them everywhere. They had them at liquor stores, grocery stores. You can go to a neighborhood tavern, a bar. You will always see the famous signs there, uh, you know, hanging outside the bars, you know. And uh, let's see. So 
let's see what else. So uh, I wanted to see what happened. So the it was a very popular beer until the early 1970s that the formula was changed and it never recovered, which I don't know who decided that. To me, that was a very dumb idea, a very dumb decision. And uh, they did uh, tested it and retested it, but you know the public didn't like it. They they hated it, they disliked it intensely. They they wanted back, they wanted the old uh, recipe back, and it declined, and uh, which is a shame. And uh, let's see, so that went out of business uh, very. Not very quickly, but slowly but surely, and uh, they did bring it back. I don't know if it's the original formula. I don't know if it's the original taste. I have no idea because uh, for me, I never, never tasted it. I think I did once, but I don't think it was the original formula. It's probably the the, the changed one. So I don't know. I wish I did, you know, but I was too young <laughs> to drink it. And uh, there were other products uh, introduced during the uh, during when Schlitz beer was uh, in business. Uh, there was, uh, of course, Schlitz Light. You know, every every beer marketed had a light beer. You know, I think the first one was light beer that was from Meisterbrau, and it was Meisterbrau Light. And there was also Schlitz Dark and uh, Schlitz Malt Liquor, and that. That one was very popular due the fact that it had the commercials where there was a running bull in the commercial at the end. So when every so a couple of people or people were in a store or at a bar or a home, when they start drinking the Schlitzma liquor beer, all of a sudden the the it would start shaking the the house or where they were staying. And then here comes, and then the bull comes crashing into the wall or a window. It's so I think it's hilarious. I love that, you know. And they they played those commercials. I think I remember in the late seventies and early eighties. So mostly, you know, I remember they used to show that uh, during Saturday Night Live. And uh, of course, uh, during sports uh, telecasts. And uh, so that's. That's interesting. Uh, another thing about Schlitz Light, I remember the actor James Coburn, and uh, he was a spokes spokesman for that. He did commercials, and I remember like one commercial he would uh, he was it was set in the old west. He walk in as a cowboy, and you know when he entered the doors, everyone just uh, looked at him, you know, and there was a complete silence. And then he would uh, approach the bar and and said to the barkeep. Schlitz Light. So, you know, he was a wonderful actor. I loved, uh, I loved him. My favorite movie for him, uh, about him was In Flight, In Like Flint. He was a great man, great actor. And uh, the slogans of Schlitz beer, uh, I will read them off. So maybe this will uh, refresh your memory. This is very interesting. I like that. So uh, the slogans were, of course, the beer that made Milwaukee famous. That's a very famous one. That stuck out for years, years. And when you're out of Schlitz, you're out of beer, which I played in the commercial. That's another one. And Real Gusto. I remember that as well. And then uh, Just Kiss the Hops, Move Up to Schlitz, and The Greatest Name in Beer. But the first one I mentioned, the beer that made Milwaukee famous, Famous and the second one, when you're out of Schlitz, you're out of beer. Those were very memorable. So, um, so that was so that was fun. That was nice. Anyway, um, so now uh, let's see. Uh, the funny thing about it on the TV show Laverne and Shirley, they had a uh, they worked at a brewery and it was called Shots Brewery, and I think it was partly uh, it was from like Schlitz, you know, it's like a, they call it a comic allusion to that, so that was funny. And uh, on the TV series, TV series, excuse me, Mad Men, uh, Schlitz beer was frequently mentioned, so. It's a great. Uh, it was a great beer. Um, 
still is. I don't know. I haven't I haven't seen it in in Chicago and not in liquor stores or any stores. I've not seen it. So hopefully it will come back to popularity. Uh, keep your fingers crossed. Okay. All right. That's all for Schlitz. And now to uh, right now I'll be talking about the director Richard Donner. And I mentioned before in the beginning of the program, he passed away July 5th, which was yesterday in 2021. He was a wonderful director, wonderful producer and comic book writer. And uh, he's well known for movies as the 1978 movie Superman, the star Christopher Reeve. And he directed The Goonies, Scrooge, and the Lethal Weapon movies, which... Uh, he also uh, produced uh, movies Free Willy and the X-Men. So I will read off his credits in a moment. But right now, here is a TV trailer from the movie Superman in 1978 that they aired on television, of course. So here it is. From a doomed planet in a distant galaxy to a fantastic underground hideaway. From the fortress of solitude to the bustling city room of the Daily Planet. Look, up on the screen, it's Superman. Superman, the movie, rated PG. Now playing, check newspapers for local listing. Okay, I'm back. Uh... I'm glad you enjoyed the trailer for the 1978 movie Superman that directed by Richard Donner. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about his career. And uh, here we go. So uh, let's see. Uh, his name, uh, he was born Richard Donald Swatsburg in the Bronx, New York. And uh, he wanted to be an actor and he did... Uh, he did a little acting, so according to his biography, let's see what we got. He, you know, he. Uh, I want to mention he directed a lot of uh, movies, you know, and produced a lot of movies. So let's see. So he did. Uh, he did some acting, and the uh, let's see. Uh, the funny thing is, he acted in a. Uh, he did a few. TV spots. Uh, I'll mention just one that a lot of people remember. He was in The Man from Uncle, and he played a drunk. And and that was uh, so. If you have if you have the show on DVD or you happen to catch the episode on TV, uh, the episode is called Gio, Gioco Piano Fair. Uh, he is in there. Um, I have to check the DVD, which I have, and 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 try to seek him. So you know, and that was. That was quite interesting. So he 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 did act in the uh, the movies he directed, uh, Superman, Superman Two. Uh, he was in Tales from the Crypt. Uh, he was in a movie, uh, the 1994 movie Maverick, that uh, that was from the James Garner TV show. He was on, he played a dealer, and uh, just a couple more. So that's 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 great. So okay, so uh, let's see here. Uh, his first movie, which he directed, was called X-15. That uh, was released in 1961, and it starred Charles Bronson and Mary Tyler Moore. And I think it was during, uh, probably filmed before she started the Dick Van Dyke show. And uh, about seven years later, he directed Salt and Pepper that starred Sammy Davis Jr. and Peter Lawford. You know, they showed this movie once a long time ago on... In the 80s, 19, in, on Channel 66, I wish I'd seen it, but uh, if I happen to find it on TCM, Turn of Classic Movies, I'll record it. You know, I'll watch it because I, I love those guys, you know, the Rat Pack. They were part of the Rat Pack, you know, Sammy Davis Jr. and Peter Lawford. Now, his breakthrough film was The Omen. And, uh, you know, I saw that. It's a good movie, very scary you know, at the time, it was released in 1976. I remember a lot of people went to, to see the movie in Fort City Cinema when it came out. And it was, uh, it starred Gregory, Gregory Peck and Lee Remick. And uh, it's still it's still a classic hit, classic horror hit. And then uh, next movie he directed was Superman the Movie, which I saw it when it was first released 
at Fort City Cinema uh, in Chicago. I went with my brother, little brother at the time. He was about, uh, how old was he? 11 years old, 11 or 12 years old. And we went together and uh, it was great. It was phenomenal. I, I loved the movie. Christopher Ray played the role beautifully. It was perfect. And uh, Lex Luthor, uh, Gene Hackman played Lex Luthor. He was a good Luthor. I liked him. So, and then, uh, and then, uh, then he directed Superman two. There was like a controversy, uh, and he, he had a uh, Richard Downer had a difficult relationship with the producers Alexander Salkin and his brother, and the producer of the movie. So. So there was back and forth, and then uh, you know it, it was it was a great movie, but then uh, Richard Donner left or got fired, and then but they released the movie that Richard Donner uh, you know directed, and it was called Superman Two: The Richard Donner Cut. I have it on DVD, so I like to see it again, and we'll see. And then Marlon Brando, who played Superman's father Jarrell, is in the movie. He wasn't in the uh, the movie that I saw in the theater, but he was rest- his scenes were restored, so that's great about that. Okay, and then um, now I'll talk about his uh, television work and uh, as a director. And I will I'm not going to read all the credits. You know, I just read uh, what uh, epi- what TV series you are familiar with. So here we go. Uh, he directed Wanted Dead or Alive. He directed six episodes, which starts Steve McQueen. Great, great show. Uh, one episode of Route 66. Okay. He directed seven episodes of The Rifleman. Five episodes of Have Gone with Travel. Uh, let's see. Uh, the Twilight Zone. He directed six episodes, and the most famous one was Nightmare at 20,000 Feet that starred William Shatner, and that is the most, that is the classic. I love that episode. And uh, let's see what else. He uh, he directed The Man from Uncle. I mentioned that. You know, he had a bit part in that, four episodes. Uh, Believe it or not, he directed Gilligan's Island. (laughs) He really did. And uh, Perry Mason, three three episodes, uh, 12 O'Clock High. Four episodes. Get Smart, two episodes. He did uh, The Fugitive, two episodes. Wild Wild West, three episodes. That's wonderful. And uh, four episodes he directed was The Banana Splits. <laughs> he directed the segment Danger Island. Do you remember the, the show? Oh, with Chango. I love that part. It's hilarious. So I'm, I was surprised about that. When I first watched Banana Splits, I had no idea <laughs> he directed that. Let's see what else. Uh, uh, four episodes of Canon that start William Conrad. Streets of San Francisco, two episodes that start Carl Malden and Michael Douglas. And uh, in three episodes of Kojak starred Telly Zavallis. And uh, the last uh, t- uh, the last no, uh, the last TV show he directed was Tales from the Crypt. Uh, he directed that, and uh, he did star in it, star in the show. Okay, and then uh, let's see what movies, what other movies he did. Uh, like I mentioned, he mentioned. I, I'm sorry, I mentioned The Omen, Superman, uh, The Toy that starred uh, Richard Pryor and Jackie Gleason. He also uh, directed Lady Hawk. Remember that. The Goonies. People love the Goonies. You know, I saw it once on TV. I wish I'd seen it in the theater, but I got to watch it again. I heard it's wonderful. Uh, Lethal Weapon. Uh, people loved loved his movies. Uh, loved the movies of Lethal Weapon with uh, Mel Gibson and Danny Glover. I've seen the first one, not the second or third. Maybe I'll come around to it. And uh, he directed Maverick, the what you mentioned before. From the James Garner TV series, uh, that was a good movie. I liked that. That was very good. And uh, other ones, Conspiracy Theory, Timeline, and the last movie he uh, directed was called Sixteen Blocks, and that came out in two thousand six. So that's good. And uh, he did direct some music videos from, from Sting, and uh, also the 
theme song from the Goonies which sang by, by Cindy Lauper. He directed that. So that's oh, he also directed Inside Moves that came out in 1980. I, I like that movie. That was great. And uh he did direct one TV movie, and it's called Sarah T Portrait of a Teenage Alcohol. It came out in 1975. I remember watching this. I remember watching this, and I'm trying to find out who starred in it. I think it was Linda Blair. Yeah, Linda Blair. And uh, Larry Hagman played her father. And Mike, Mark Hamill was in that movie. So I think it's on YouTube. You could find it if you could try. Uh, I'm going to try myself to find that. So that would be great. Okay, and uh, let's see what else about Richard Downer. Um, he also... Uh, wrote comic books. He was a comic book writer, and uh, let's see. And uh, him and a comic book writer named Jeff Johns collaborated stories about Superman, and they wrote a story for Action Comics that starts Superman, and that was uh, issue one thousand. That was a milestone, and that was released in twenty eighteen. So that was interesting. So, um, like I said before, he was a great director, uh, directed wonderful movies, wonderful movies. And uh, I'm trying to remember, did he record the, the and uh, let's see, the uh, Twilight Zone, the movie, I don't think he was in it. I don't think he directed it because I'm looking up. And uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think it was. So, uh, but they remade the 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 episode 20, Nightmare at Twenty Thousand Feet in the 1983 movie of the Twilight Zone, and it wasn't William Shatner; it was John Lithgow. Now that segment of that movie was wonderful. I liked that movie, but the rest of my eh, it was okay. <laughs> but you know, but Twilight Zone is a classic. It's a classic TV show. I'll talk about that in a future episode. Okay, enough rambling for me <laughs> about Richard Downer. Because I, I enjoyed it, and I hope it made sense to you and everyone else that's listening. So uh, that will be all for today, and I'm glad you can join me. Uh, this is Episode 37, Season 2 of the Vanish Chicago and Stories, the podcast. I'm your host, Pete Costanas, and I hope you can join me on my next episode, hopefully this weekend. And uh, we'll have a couple surprises. Uh, just tune in. So uh, have a wonderful day, everybody, and bye-bye for now for me. And here's bye-bye for now from Ray Raynard. So take it away, Ray. We have to go. Bye-bye-bye.